Oh, science. Dance to what happens when you fail to drill religion into a spoiled little brat who won't stop asking you questions. A field that has fielded more geniuses than geniuses have fielded the field. It's also one of the few fields you'll find individuals who make your cousin Alan's peculiar borderline antics seem like the quirks of a genius too. So here's some of the craziest scientists who have ever scienced. Enjoy. Before we kick this off, Remember to take a moment to hit the pretty little subscribe button and ding that bell. Go on. Ding it. Technically a mathematician, Pythagoras has contributed a fair share to physics to compete with science's elite crazy. A man so clever he decided to work out every single right angle triangle until the end of time. And if you don't hate him already because your math nerd girlfriend didn't stop saying his name in her sleep as he quote unquote taught her the secret to the universe, then nice. Okay, so what makes Pythagoras so crazy? Well, beside the fact that he can clearly manifest in a beautiful girl's dreams in the 21st century, Pythagoras claimed he had lived through four lives and may have drowned a man because he proved irrational numbers existed. That last one can't be verified, but the fact that the rumour ever existed shows how insane people thought the man was. We do know he started a cult which later founded his own religion. It was super hush hush, which worried a lot of folk back then. Funnily enough, we later discovered this cult prayed to the number 10 and were strict vegetarians. I say funnily enough, because one of the rules was no father beans meaning don't eat them, don't smell them, don't touch them. No, seriously. In an almost foreseeable turn of events, seeing as he had a cult, an angry mob formed against Pythagoras, whereupon he ran until he met the edge of a bean field. And he was like, Oh man. Rather than defy his strict set of rules and flee through the bean field, he decided to reason with the ensuing mob, and the mob were like, Wait, what? Uh, it's like, against my beliefs to touch a bean? Wait, you'd rather face an angry mob than cross the boundary of a bean field? Because it goes against your values? Yeah? Man, this guy's got balls! This guy has something we should all strive for. Conviction. Yeah, yeah maybe he's not, he's not so the same guy. Yeah, like we should show. crown him king. <laughs> no, no, they killed him, obviously. <laughs> Madame Curie is the epitome of one's discovery being one's demise. It's impossible in this day and age not to have heard of Marie Curie, seeing as the Curies are like the Kennedys of the science world and her discovery is one of the most effective treatments to cancer that we have to date. She's the only woman on this list, which completely proves my theory that women can be just as crazy as men, but totally aren't crazy. Like, who would ever call a lovely human woman crazy? Not me. Now, if you've heard about Marie Curie, you know why I'm mentioning her. If you haven't, it's because of something we call gross negligence today and an occupational hazard in the 1900s. During the 1900s, she was studying how radiation can treat tumours and so she had to use radioactive elements like uranium and polonium. I guess in hindsight, we all know that a metal powerful enough to shrink and even kill a tumour was probably going to have an effect on the body in unimaginable ways. But even by 1900s knowledge, this was just nuts. During her research, Madame Curie was known to walk around with a test tube of uranium and polonium in her pockets. You know, like you would your keys. She even liked to wave the stuff around and show off its glowing properties to anyone who was curious. And knowing the chunk of metal glowed, Curie decided it'd be a good idea to put some by her bedside as a nightlight. Now for those of you who are thinking there was no way she could have known the dangers of the radioactive element at the time, hold on right there. It's well documented that her hands would crack and scar after handling raw radiation all day, both which she attributed to hard work instead of the metal she was holding. I mean, come on. Okay, for the last person is still in doubt this wasn't pure madness, there was this. Whoa. 
what are you doing? Oh, nothing. I've just strapped a vial of the glowing metal to my arm for the last... 9 hours and 54 minutes. Oh. Okay. Wait, why? I don't know. But it seems to be burning my skin without pain. Cool. Yeah, that happened. Need I tell you what she died of? Germans and science go together like hugs and kisses. Or pins and needles, depending on your perspective. So there were unsurprisingly quite a few to pick from. Today, I introduce Werner Forsman. Forsman was a heart surgeon in the early 1930s, a time where heart surgeries could not be done non-invasively for what were obvious reasons, like how could you get to someone's heart without opening their torso first. Forsman had a theory though, that he could get to their heart by worming a tube up the veins, and not only that, he was so confident he was willing to volunteer for it to be done on himself. However, his colleagues, being completely of sound mind and body, disapproved strongly because, duh. But did that stop him? No. No, it didn't. Oh, hey boss. Fancy seeing you here. I'm here every lunch, Werner. Funny that. I was just wondering if you had reconsidered that thing I was talking about with you. No, Werner. Come on. No way. I'm not letting you stick tubes up people's veins. Please? No, damn it. How many times do I have to say no? In fact, I'm revoking your access to the supply cabinet. Fine. It is my solemn and God-given right to stick a tube up the veins of a person. For though I am a man, I am a man with a dream, a man of science, unhinged and untamed, and I will succeed at all costs. Hi, Dr. Forsman. Hello, nurse. Hmm. Despite the fact that his boss went out of his way to stop Forsman getting the supplies he needed, again, he wouldn't stop Forsman. In an outlandish Hail Mary, he tricked the nurse into thinking he was in love with her so she could sneak him the supplies he needed, and she reluctantly agreed to do it, as long as she was the patient he operated on. Forsman agreed, whereupon he restrained and anesthetized her on the operating table. In the maddest bit of all, he decided instead of operating on her, to cut an incision in his own arm and blindly navigate a catheter into his heart. He lived. Actually, when he was done operating on himself, Forsman just walked down the hall to the x-ray room to inspect his handiwork. And when he showed his boss, his boss was like, Huh, who would have thought I did good, huh? Forsman, sir, you're a very, very stupid man. Are you out of your mind? When I'm done with you, you'll be using those nimble hands to cut down trees in the middle of nowhere, you stupid, stupid man. The next decade and a half of his life consisted of a swift dismissal, another dismissal, a change from cardiology to urology, a spell as a medical officer for the Nazis, time as a US prisoner of war, a career shift to a lumberjack in the Black Forest, a career shift to a medic in a country, and a career shift to a corpse, because humans can only shift so many careers before they die. In case you're wondering what of? Heart disease, ironically. Now you may be thinking, it's great all these crazies are from a different time. There aren't mad scientists like that anymore with all the scientific protocol and safety measures now, right? Oh wait till you hear about Kevin Warwick. Warwick is a British engineer who has done research in the field of AI, control systems, biomedical engineering, and most importantly, robotics. Why is that most important I hear you ask? Well. You remember when you were a child and you saw the Terminator and was like, man, that sure would be cool to be a man robot. But you grew up to be a well balanced person and was like, actually, that would probably be a horrifying mess. Well, Kevin Warwick was willing to put all sorts of electronics in his body to prove that they could coexist with human biology. At first, a simple RFID chip was implanted in his arm to give him control of doors, lights, heaters, and so on. Then he took it a step further with a vastly more complicated implant, 
which I'm going to greatly oversimplify by calling an arm chip meant to give him full control of an external robotic arm. You know, like a metal sock puppet. Well, it worked. And because of this same implant, he was connected to the internet at the university where he worked at. He was connected to the internet. The man could connect his robot arm via the great invisible spiderweb. And not only that, he could also feel what was happening to the arm because of the sensors on the fingertip of the robot arm. I know at this point you may be asking, this can't get any wilder, right? Wrong. You haven't learned a single thing from this video, have you? Of course it can. In another kick in the groin of our measly human capabilities, a similar array was implanted into his wife's arm. Why? Because he wanted to create a long distance telepathic style communication between Mr. and Mrs. Romantic. Well, it worked. No matter how many times you hear about these Project Cyborg experiments, it doesn't get any less weird. Trust me. I would highly recommend the watch of Kevin Warwick's work. He's the only living person on this list, which makes it all the crazier. Your average human is prone to do some out there stuff, but some scientists take it to new heights in the name of innovation. I don't advocate sticking a tube up your vein or handling raw uranium. You don't have to be a maniac to improve the world. You don't have to be reckless to help others. But to all of you who are taking great risks or making great sacrifices to improve the world and help others, this mere egg thanks you. Look who made it to the end. I'm Mr. Dropout. You can call me Drop. Welcome to my new channel. If you like this content, be one of the first to subscribe and press that bell button. If you just like watching videos made by an egg with too much time on his hands, comment down below with the hashtag I'm with the egg. Until we meet again, drop out.